Happy New Year, sorcerers. That's right. From now on, anybody who is in the strategic sourcing or global procurement profession, I'm going to call you sorcerers. Because when you tell people what you do for a job and say, I'm in global procurement or I'm strategic sourcing or I'm in purchasing, they're like, what? What? Joey, do you still do computers? Are you still computer Joey? Yes, that's what, that's what people used to call me when, 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 when I was in computers. They, they called me Computer Joey. Yeah, people in my family still call me Computer Joey. It's, it's kind of weird. But for all you global procurement people out there, for all you sourcing people out there, from now on, you're sorcerers. It's gonna catch on. I'm gonna make it catch on. I thought it would be a good idea to do a year-end video and talk about some common things that global procurement or sorcerers, what they deal with at the end of the year to help you plan for the future. And maybe also, again, if you have people in your family that are like, what do you do for a living? You can, you can show them this and tell them that if you're grumpy around Christmas time, there's a reason and you know, you should, they should leave you alone. For those of you that follow this video channel or maybe read my blogs, or any of the other things that I do, old podcasts. I wanted to let you know, it's a little bit of a scavenger hunt. I am on Reddit and I'm pretty active on the Reddit procurement thread. I'm not gonna tell you what my user ID is because I wanna see if you actually can find me. I don't think that I'm that hard to find, but I'm out there and I do try to respond to things that people post. Most people have no idea that I have this channel and I don't promote it on the procurement thread on Reddit, but I go on there to have a sense of community with procurement professionals. If I'm in a position to share knowledge, I do, and I try to answer questions, and I also gleam interesting bits of information. People post interesting articles about procurement that I try to share with my teams. One of the most common questions that I see on the Reddit procurement thread is, how does sourcing get a seat at the table? There's always some variation of this question. And I wanted to address that here because I think it ties in very nicely to year-end activities. Many wise people that have mentored and trained me often say that global procurement or sourcing professionals or sorcerers, the primary function of what they do, yes, we negotiate deals. Yes, we try to mitigate risk. But a big portion of what a global procurement department does is convene. We get groups of people together so we can all make the best possible decision on whether or not we should proceed with a particular contract or deal or whatever. We work with the financial departments, financial controllers, accountants, accounts payable. We work with the IT departments. We work with corporate risk departments. We work with legal departments. We convene all of these groups together to make people aware of deals and also make sure that we're following the right corporate protocols. It's very important to embrace this aspect of our occupation. When people complain about global procurement and sourcing people and purchasing people, when we complain about not having a seat at the table, it's because we're not embracing this aspect of our roles. By convening all of the people that are involved in the purchasing process, by getting them connected with the customer that wants to make the purchase, this is where our true value and where our true power is presented and where it's realized. It's not just about getting a deal done. It's about educating. It's about making sure that everybody is aware of the conditions, the risks, the cost elements, so everyone can make the most educated decision. And by doing this frequently, and by doing this consistently, global procurement people will be invited back to the table because no one wants to mess up the next deal. No one wants to delay the next deal. If you're new to the procurement role, you may think that you're just a paper pusher. You're just pushing contracts around, getting signatures, but you're not. That's the, that's the least important part of the job. It's getting people to understand why these conditions are in the contract, why they're so important, and why the supplier may try to lessen their potency. This is, this is the whole part of the job. It's educate, it's inform, convene. Here's the second thing that I want to discuss at my end of year videos. The end of the year. Companies typically try to do deals at the very end of the year to show more revenue on their books. Now you can take that end of year mentality. That can also happen at the end of the quarter, the end of a or the half year of a company. They might want to try to juice their books. And this can happen at the end of the month because not 
every supplier that your company does business with has the same fiscal year-end close. Some companies don't close their books out on December 31st. Some companies, just about any given month of the year, a company will have their fiscal close at that month, depending on what their accounting calendar is. So at any given month end, you can be rushing to get a deal because that company wants to close their annual books with more profit and more revenue. This is an unnatural negotiating point that opens up once a quarter or once a year. And companies will be more motivated to accept your terms and conditions and pricing because they want to get that deal on their books. It's important for friends of procurement people, sorcerers, to know that these month end, quarter end, year end periods are usually very busy and very difficult for the procurement professional. This is an opportune time to educate your customer base, to make sure that your customers understand when these quarter, monthly, annual, when all of these closes are happening, because those are the times to do your deals. Make sure they understand that you might wanna to wait to do a particular deal until that particular time of year, whenever that corporate close is, or whenever that half year or quarter is. That's the opportune time to strike and to close a contract and negotiation that may be going on for months. Your customers may not understand the tempo of these things. It is very important to inform them and to educate them on when these things are happening and when is the opportune time to strike. My third and final point connects the first and second, and it goes back to the theme of convening and educating. It's very important for procurement professionals or sorcerers to be familiar with your company's accounting policies and principles. At the end of every year, when budgets are closing, your customer base, your business customers, will likely want to spend whatever money they have on the budget. This money in most companies will disappear at the end of the budget cycle. So if they have available funds, they will try to move deals forward and have that expense hit this particular calendar year. Makes total sense. Spend the money that you have now so you don't have to ask for it later. The problem is when you're at the very end of the year and people are trying to find creative ways of spending their money, and again, suppliers are very, very aware of this, while the supplier may be willing, while the customer may be willing, while the budget may be there, it's very important to understand how the accounting of that expenditure is going to be handled. In many cases, when you are buying something where the goods are not received, the goods or services are not received, it doesn't matter if the check goes out the door before the end of the year, your accounting department may not count that expense at the end of that calendar year. They may move it and spread it out throughout the course of the time that it's being consumed. So you may have a bunch of sourcing people, sorcerers, you may have them running around trying to get deals done at the end of the year to accommodate a business request because the business customer is driving hard because they have the money in the budget, only to find out that it doesn't matter. So there's no point in adding that additional stress for the year end and trying to get a deal jam through because it's gonna get spread out like peanut butter throughout the following year or multiple years depending on the nature of the contract. If you're a sorcerer and you are not clear about that particular element of your company's financial policies, make it a point in the new year to talk to your financial controller or your favorite accountant within the company and ask them how those expenditures are covered. I'll give you an example just to make sure this is clear. If somebody has $5,000 left over at the end of their budget, at the end of the cycle, and they buy $5,000 worth of monitors, that's perfectly fine. That will hit at the end of the year. But if you buy like a 12 month cloud subscription and you prepay it and it's $5,000, most likely your financial controller or accounting team will take the goods and services not yet rendered and spread that money throughout the remaining year or the following year. So if we're talking in the end of 2021, you get the checkout by the end of 2021. In 2022, they'll probably spread out that monthly subscription payment throughout the course of the year. So it doesn't matter that the check went out the door. You have to be careful about that and you have to really understand how your company treats the books. And again, if you don't know, ask someone. 
it's very important because it may be the difference between you working on New Year's Eve, which is today, that's the difference between you working until midnight and maybe not. To all my sorcerers out there, I want to wish you a happy new year and say best of luck in 2022. It's going to be a rough year with the availability of human resources, supply chain shortages for physical goods, and inflation. It's going to be a very rough year. But that's why making videos like this, finding each other on community sites like Reddit on the procurement threads, we have to find each other, we have to support each other, we have to help each other do our jobs more efficiently and better. And there's always opportunity to do better. So I'm looking forward to the challenges of 2022, and I'm looking forward to talking to all of you just a little bit more. So once again, Happy New Year, and I'll be back soon with another video. I, well, you thought I was gonna go the whole video without addressing the, the hideous jacket? So, I, I made a promise to someone, I made a promise to a coworker that I would, I would find an ugly jacket, and, and I tried to find a leopard print jacket, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't find one that, that was going, that, I couldn't find one for me. So I got, I got this ugly jacket. This is hideous, isn't it? No, I did not think that this was a good style choice, by the way, but you know, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta zhuzh it up a little bit. Sometimes, you know, you're on video and you gotta wear a hideous gold leaf jacket, you know. I might even make this a recurring theme. If, if you think that I should wear this horrible jacket, which is making me sweat profusely, if you think I should wear this jacket more often in, in these videos, by all means, let me know in the comments because, because of reasons. Because of course I, I, I'm, yeah, this is sweaty. This is, this is heavier than you think it is. And all these lights are on me, so. So yeah, that. Hi Mel, hope you like the jacket.